Good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I uh, appreciate your attendance. Um, today, this session is going to be about what Samsung's investing in. And uh, we have um, myself from the Open Innovation Center, uh, the Strategic Investments Group, and then Shankar Chandran uh, from SSIC's Catalyst Fund. We'll talk a little bit, I'll talk a little bit about um, how the two investment groups are different. Uh, and then we also have Samsung Ventures as well. Um, but uh, I'll keep that really brief. The best thing to do is just reach out to all of us and we, we'll figure it out internally how, how we work together. But, we'll, uh, but I'll go first and we'll, I'll talk a little bit about the uh, Open Innovation Center and the investments group there and what we're looking to invest in and Shankar will follow. So I joined Samsung about two and a half years ago um, after about 15, 16 years in, um, in venture capital. Um, and the Open Innovation Center was created just about two years ago. And the Open Innovation's mission is to empower entrepreneurs to create breakout products in partnership with Samsung. There's four teams within the OIC um, that, uh, uh, that we've implemented to work with startups. So first there's the partnerships team. And they're building um, partnerships with um, startups and also larger companies in Silicon Valley. Partnerships that are maybe a little bit more complex to execute that require feet on the ground in Silicon Valley, as well as sort of ecosystem developing um, kinds of things. So a lot of the partnerships that the partnerships team has run include ecosystem development for new devices, such as our Gear VR. There's also an acquisitions team when we look at Silicon Valley, there are a lot of large tech companies doing lots of acquisitions, most of which we don't really hear about in the press. Uh, but Samsung has been less acquisitive in the past few years. We're getting more acquisitive. And a part of the reason for that is, is having an acquisitions team in Silicon Valley. So the recent SmartThings acquisition was handled by this team, as well as the Boxy acquisition that was, handled, uh, that was done uh, last year. Uh, we also have what we call accelerators. So we have two accelerators, um, one in San Francisco and a new, another one in uh, New York. Uh, the accelerators are really sort of internal incubators, except that we source the entrepreneurs and ideas from the outside. So we have about 14 teams spread across, again, San Francisco and New York, working on products and services for Samsung. The fourth team is the team that I lead, which is the investments team. So we're looking at early stage investments um, that uh, have the potential to create meaningful impact for Samsung's businesses. So what does the Strategic Investments Group do? Well, we've identified 25 startups for investments in the last two years. So we're on about a one a month kind of pace. We're mainly focused on software and services. Um, and while we think financial uh, returns are certainly important, um, the strategic returns are primary for us. So I may make a $3 million investment in a company, get a 20x return. Um, certainly that would be appreciated and I'll get, I would get a nice pat on the back. But for a company that is doing $220 billion in revenues, uh, $5 billion in profits, $60 million gets lost, right? So what we care about is um, how can we identify those startups, those innovations that we can bring to Samsung to create real impact across all our businesses. Um, as I said, we're early stage investors, and for us, that means seed, series A, series B. About 50% of the companies that we've identified are in the series A category, about 25 in seed, and about 25 in series B. We're investing up to $3 million per round, um, and uh, we've done as little as 250. Uh, we could go even smaller if, uh, if the uh, situation calls for it. We aim to be quick. Um, all our decision making is local. So we're not going back to Korea to get approval. All the decisions are made within the group, um, within OIC. We have two teams in Mountain View and New York. All of us have uh, many, many years of either VC or startup backgrounds. So we understand how to do venture capital and what it's like to, to be in a startup. So um, we're, we pay very close attention to what is sort of mainstream venture capital. So just real quickly how we're different. Uh, so Shankar will talk a little bit more about uh, his fund, the Catalyst Fund, uh, that comes out of the device solution side of the business. Samsung really has three sort of separate businesses, three different CEOs, one on the device solution side. Um, 
one on, around IT and mobile communications. That's really the mobile products that we have. So anything with a, uh, a SIM card, for instance, or a tablet, anything that's mobile will be on that side of the business. Then the consumer electronics uh, piece of our business is the TV business as well as sort of the digital appliances um, side of the business as well. Um, so Samsung Open Innovation Center, which, uh, which, uh, which I cover, comes, uh, focuses on those two businesses, the IT mobile communications and the consumer electronics pieces. There's a third arm that does investments, uh, and that's uh, Samsung Venture Investment Corporation or Samsung Ventures America. Uh, Samsung Ventures has been doing investments uh, for a long time, 10 years in the, in the Valley. Um, we all work very closely together, but Samsung Ventures is um, set up more outside of the business units. So the business units are um, LPs, if you will, to the GP, which is Samsung Ventures. Again, it can get complicated. Best thing to do is reach out to any of us. We'll sort out the differences and, and, and uh, send you to the right people at the right place. Where do we target as, um, as uh, Open Innovation Center, Strategic Investments Group? Um, given the scope of our businesses, our areas are pretty wide ranging. So we work very closely with the business units to, uh, to focus on the areas that they care about. And also we focus on things that we think they should care about. So we'll uh, not only support current business initiatives, but also look to shape future business initiatives. Um, the, uh, as I said, our primary uh, activity is really around creating those strategic connections. So it's really important for us to understand where, our, uh, where the business units are headed. Having said that, the things that we tend to focus on more or that are going to be more focus areas for us uh, going into 2015 are we're going to continue to focus on Internet of Things. Um, again, as I mentioned before, Smart Things was an acquisition that we recently made. We're very excited about this space. Um, we really think that the infrastructure and the devices out today are really creating a sea change now where the Internet of Things has been talked about for a very long time, uh, but it's only now where all the pieces are coming together where we think there's going to be a real revolution in IoT. Security is also an important area for us, especially with mobile. Uh, I think with the mobile devices penetrating the enterprise, your consumer electronics devices penetrating the enterprise, there's a whole new set of uh, security issues around that that we're, very excited, that, that we're very interested in exploring. Digital health is another obvious area where, again, the power of mobile devices and mobile sensors has really um, enabled this whole new marketplace or this whole new ecosystem. And so we're excited about that space. Uh, virtual and augmented reality again, was an area that we uh, really identified very early on. And so, um, you know, you, during, if, you, if you were at the keynote, you saw a lot of talk about um, our VR and AR initiatives. So again, we're very excited about that. Uh, big data an and analytics, next generation analytics, also a space that we care very much about. Um, M-commerce, uh, e-commerce has been around for a very long time again. Uh, and there's been a lot of talk about M-commerce over the last few years. But I think, again, a lot of those pieces are coming together in 2015 where we're very excited about uh, making uh, more investments in that space. So what can you expect from us? Um, we uh, at, at uh, strategic, innovations, uh, strategic Investments Groups within the OIC, um, we want to make sure that we're option enhancing, not option limiting. We talk about that a lot. Uh, we're very sensitive to the pluses and the minuses that come with uh, corporate venture capital, uh, corporates investing in your companies. Um, there are very strong pluses, but we also understand there can be minuses, and so we work to mitigate those things. So when we look to an investment, we want to make sure that um, our interests are aligned in success and that we're not limiting your options, right? So we're not going to be asking for exclusivity in terms of working with only Samsung. Uh, we're not asking for rights of first refusals, things like that. Anything that will encumber the success of the company is something that we want to stay away from too. We don't want to be investing in a company that's not going to be successful in the marketplace. It doesn't, it doesn't help us. It doesn't help you, certainly. We have a major emphasis on collaboration. As I mentioned before, the financial success of a company is very important, but we really do care about uh, the partnerships that we're able to engender. Um, so what do we do? When, what, what do we mean when we say we want to emphasize collaboration? We want to help companies that uh, we invest in navigate Samsung. Samsung is a very, very big place. Um, lots of different teams uh, within, um, 
uh, North America, but lots of teams within uh, headquarters as well. Many of you may have met with lots of teams within Samsung. You get a lot of business cards, but it's hard to figure out how do those people fit into the organization uh, that we have because it, we, we are so big. And part of our job is to help you to navigate uh, within Samsung so that we can identify collaborations together. Um, so when we have an idea of what you're, what you're good at and we have a good understanding of what the business units are looking for, we're going to help you to identify those collaboration opportunities. And then once those collaboration opportunities are identified, we really become advocates for you within the company. Um, so we're trying to help HQ or help our business units understand what the startup's needs are, right? So that uh, when they are making demands that seem unreasonable uh, to a startup, uh, we can explain why they may, they may seem unreasonable. Um, if uh, a startup is making demands that are unreasonable to a large corporate, we can tell you why those demands are unreasonable, right? So we can be sort of that advocate for the companies within Samsung. And then once that collaboration uh, is identified and we start to execute around that collaboration, we're there to guide the companies through those collaborations. So I think what you want to look for is you want to look for uh, investors who are constantly adding value to your company, and this is how we're going to be adding value, right? So um, the, we want to emphasize those collaborations. And I think in that way, uh, the investments team and the startups that we invest in are very well aligned. Um, you're obviously coming to Samsung, not because of the pure capital, but you're really coming here to look for the partnerships and the collaborations that, uh, that can accelerate your business and bring innovation into Samsung. I think in that regard, we've done very well. We've made 25 investments over the past uh, two years, and we've, uh, we have 21 collaborations. We've, those, each of our companies, 21 of those companies have had or are in active collaborations with Samsung, everything from evaluation um, all the way to going to in-market with Samsung. So just as a case study in terms of what we're able to accomplish, uh, we made an investment in a company called Life360 uh, about a year ago. Uh, they are the leading family network uh, in the world with 43 million uh, plus families worldwide registered. Um, they take, uh, their, their core app is uh, location sharing so that your family members know where, um, where, uh, where you are at all times. And uh, so you can, you can um, share your location with with your spouse, with your significant other, with your kids. Your kids know where, where the parents are, things like that. Um, they have over a billion location requests per day, highly successful, uh, doing very well in the market. Um, we've been able to, uh, to um, uh, get these Life360 involved in multiple collaborations now. They were uh, gear launch partners. Um, uh, on, they were launch partners on Galaxy Gear products. Uh, they're most recently a Galaxy Gifts partner on, uh, on our Note 4 devices. And now, I think those two relationships created the, um, the credibility to, to pursue a third relationship, which I think is going to be really strategic and really important to both Samsung as well as to Life360, where they're becoming a core application in a new product that we're rolling out next year. So that's a little bit about OIC and the strategic investments group there. Shankar will talk a little bit about Catalyst Fund. Thanks, Brandon. Appreciate it. Uh, folks, I'm delighted to be here. My name is uh, Shankar Chandran. I'm Vice President at Samsung Electronics. I'm responsible for a $100 million early stage fund called Samsung Catalyst Fund. Uh, let me give you a little bit of context to uh, where I sit in Samsung Electronics. Samsung Strategy and Innovation Center. Uh, we're based here, headquartered in Silicon Valley. We're based on Sand Hill Road. Uh, Menlo Park. We have offices around the world. We have a team in Israel. We have a team in Korea. We have a team in Europe as well. Uh, we are b based here, uh, but we're investing globally. And to give you context on where we sit, uh, we are part of Samsung's device solutions business. You heard Brendan talk about this. Uh, our device solutions business today builds core technology building blocks uh, for not only Samsung electronics, mobile phones, and consumer electronics products. We build it for a lot of other uh, branded products out there as well. Uh, if you don't have a Samsung phone uh, but have somebody else's, it's very likely that uh, the display or the, or the chips inside it, whether it's memory or uh, or system LSI comes from Samsung Device Solutions. So we are basically building blocks uh, for core technology across the board. 
what do we do at Sam, uh, Samsung Strategy and Innovation Center? We're really thinking about where do we go for the next two to four years. And there are a few areas that I've identified in the slide here, the Internet of Things, uh, cloud infrastructure, uh, mobile health, security, and human computer interface. Uh, in these areas, what we are targeting uh, is to be able to build new businesses. And we do that by creating architectures where startup companies can interface with us. And, and Samsung Catalyst Fund really is a tool to enable that collaboration. Uh, 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 investment is the lifeblood of all startups, and that's why you guys are all here. Uh, we enable the collaboration between startups to work with our open platforms that we are building right here in Silicon Valley. So that's, that's what we do. Uh, we realize that uh, disruptive innovation can happen all over the world, uh, which is why we have teams uh, everywhere uh, where we see a confluence of technology uh, and disruption coming together. Let me, before we talk about where we, where we want to go, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what really matters here. So Samsung is a consumer company, and we really need to think about uh, what people want. And uh, I want to give you a little bit of sense of how we think and where we are headed. So bear with me here as we walk through some of these uh, bills here. Uh, we all want good health, um, uh, but we don't want to work too hard to get there. Right, so that's, uh, that's human psychology. Uh, we all want security, uh, great security, but uh, when we have bad security, it's pretty obvious. Uh, and it's both online as well as offline. We want uh, excellent communication, and we want ubiquitous communication. We want to be able to reach anybody, everybody, all the time. We want to be able to use every one of our devices uh, uh, with us. <laughs> Uh, and we want to do it even when there's disaster. So how do we do that, right? And we want it for free. <laughs> and finally, uh, we all want great entertainment. We consume huge amounts of data, and we all love a good laugh. So how does Samsung, as the world's seventh largest brand and, and, uh, and a consumer company, think about what consumers want and then build the core technologies that, uh, that, that gets us there? So think of it this way. Every one of us here in this room have, probably has a smartphone. Uh, but where we are headed is to really want to live a smart life across the board. Uh, we want we to have smart health care delivered to us. Uh, we want to work in a smart workplace. We want to wor live in a smart home. And we want to drive a smart car. So this transition going from just a smartphone to living smartly is where the company is going. And that's where we're headed. We're trying to build core technologies that actually enables that uh, to happen. So most of us here recognize these products on the screen. Uh, this is what we are consuming today. We expect beautifully designed hardware that's got amazing uh, software on it, whether it's user interface or algorithms that really add value. And we just want these to work. And that is a very hard thing to do. Easy to say, but incredibly hard to do. And it really requires fundamental building blocks and technologies to come together. Uh, we today have a supercomputer in our pockets and our smartphones, uh, but more and more computing power is needed as we go down the road. We're also storing enormous amount of data. I just checked my Samsung Galaxy phone today. I have literally several thousand pictures and videos of my kids on my pocket. Uh, not only do we want to store this data, we want to be able to compute using a lot of this data. So memory becomes incredibly important. And guess what? We don't want to consume too much power doing this. We want our devices to last for a very long time. Uh, last thing you want to do is carry it on your charger, uh, sit in a corner, and plug against the wall. We want that to last for a very long time. And finally, we want a magical user interface. And we all remember the time when we switched over from flip phones to a smartphone where multi-touch was just magical. We just knew how to use it. No one had to teach us how to use it. We think user interface is an incredibly important piece uh, of where things are headed. But there are fundamental challenges uh, that needs to be solved. Uh, we here live in Silicon Valley. And we've been the pioneers of scaling silicon uh, technology down to where things are today. But we are definitely getting into some serious roadblocks, both from a technology perspective as well as capital required to get those chips to work faster. So uh, we are interested in companies that have, that have very disruptive ideas on how to make this uh, Moore's Law continue to progress. We talked about batteries. Uh, we want our batteries 
uh, to last a very long time, and we've made some improvements over the last couple of years. This is where fundamental material science related progress needs to come together. Uh, otherwise, uh, we're going to be consuming a tremendous amount of energy and not, not able to use our smart devices the way we want to use them. Uh, Brendan talked about security. Uh, what goes hand in hand with security is privacy. Uh, we think uh, very hard about privacy. Uh, let me give you a scenario. Uh, we're talking about digital health and mobile health. Uh, assume we're all going to wear wearable devices and, that are collecting continuous streaming data of our vital signs. I want to keep that data to myself, and I only want to share it to the people I want to share to get a service back. So privacy becomes incredibly important, not just securing the data, but making sure that my data is my data, and no one else is monetizing it behind my back. So we think very, very hard about uh, privacy. A uh, couple of other points here. Uh, uh, just a demographic trend. Uh, we all know, know this, particularly in countries like Korea and Japan and, and countries all around the world. The aging demographic uh, is a very important trend uh, that's happening. And this gives a very new uh, uh, opening in terms of thinking about how do we make our, uh, our elderly citizens live a smarter life. So senior smart living is a very interesting idea as well. How do we use technology to make their lives better? So that's a big trend. And finally, a little bit about data. Uh, in Silicon Valley, we've been talking a lot about big data. Uh, I think of it as a consumer. Uh, big data is practically useless for me, but big insights are incredibly useful. So we want to go from big data to big insights, and how do we get there? What we need to do is think about the analysis that needs to be done on big data so that we as consumers can make use of it. So we spend a lot of time thinking about that as well. So a little bit into uh, the specific areas where we made investments and why uh, these are interesting areas for Samsung. Uh, a focus, a little bit focus on, on, on mobile health and preventative health. Uh, this space, uh, the first wearable technology really started a few years ago when we started wearing our cell phones uh, on our armbands. Uh, but what, is, what we wear today is several great products that Samsung has produced as well as other, 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 other uh, OEMs out there. Uh, oriented around fitness. Where we see the world going is sensors that could be used to measure vital signs and to be able to do that incredibly accurately. Imagine sensors that are clinically accurate but that works for consumers every day. Uh, and the data collected from that becomes very valuable in order to create algorithms and, and applications and, 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 uh, and services that could be offered on top. So this is one area where uh, we spent a lot of time on. Uh, the keynote earlier today, you probably saw a couple of my colleagues uh, uh, talking about the Simban wearable platform, which is an open platform for, uh, for hardware sensors, as well as SAMI, which is an open platform for data and algorithms to run on. Cloud infrastructure is an incredibly important piece. Uh, the way we see cloud infrastructure is uh, what I alluded to earlier, going from big data to big analysis. How do we get there? The only way to get there uh, is to be able to harness a uh, lot of the computing power that is out there uh, with tremendous improvement uh, uh, in backplanes as well as uh, memory technology. We need to be able to commute, uh, compute a large amount of data uh, in a very short amount of time. And the only way to do that is to use uh, memory technology, particularly the area where Samsung uh, is leaders in. We're also very interested in uh, computer human interface. Here is the analogy that I think about all the time. Uh, remember the time when we started using keyboard and mouse uh, several years ago? And it, it basically led to the rise of the personal computer that we all started uh, having, uh, having around us. Uh, that was a huge explosion in terms of number of devices getting sold. Uh, we went from practically tens of uh, millions of large uh, computers being sold to hundreds of millions of PCs being sold every year. Uh, and then we, we then transitioned over to multi-touch on smartphones. And that led from uh, going from just 100 million devices sold a year to several billion devices a year. So that was a huge leap in computer-human interface. We think uh, there needs to be a huge improvement in computer-human interface. Uh, how do we interact with computers naturally? And how do devices interact with each other in a very seamless way? This is going to be a very critical thing uh, to happen in order for the Internet of Things uh, to really happen happen around us. Uh, what we see today uh, is, is huge uh, technology stumbling blocks. We need to be able to figure out how these devices really communicate. For us to get to 100 billion devices 
out there, uh, we need to figure out ways by which we can interface with these devices, and these devices are collecting data that we can make sense of. And this is the other area that we are focused on. Finally, a little bit about Samsung Catalyst Fund. Uh, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of my talk, it's a $100 million early stage fund. Uh, we announced the fund uh, last February, so we've been around for about 18 months. Uh, we've done a little over 20 investments uh, so far. Our investments tend to be global, so half the investments have been here, right here in Silicon Valley. The rest of the investments have been around in a place like Israel, Europe, and, and Asia as well. Uh, what we do is uh, quite similar to what uh, Brendan's team does. Uh, we work with startup companies at a very early stage. Most of our investments tend to be uh, seed stage or series A stage companies. Uh, but we really think about what is the technology problem uh, the company is trying to solve. Is it highly disruptive? Uh, is it, uh, can we really work with the company and accelerate innovation? And the way we do that is by putting together a team of veterans right here in Silicon Valley who've been in the Valley for the last 20, 30 years working on various other technology problems and, and putting that team together with experts from Samsung Electronics in Korea, the folks who've built uh, several of the semiconductor devices that you see here today. Uh, by putting these teams together, we help our companies accelerate innovation. And the idea here is we build an on-ramp for the early state startup companies to work uh, with our business units over time uh, because what we would don't want to do is wake up a couple of years from now uh, watching uh, these companies uh, getting adopted by our competitors we want to get well ahead of the curve we want to start working with early stage disruptive ideas then help these companies get onto our platforms whether it's a mobile platform or a consumer electronic platform or even our device solutions platform a little bit uh, about uh, where we are today. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, we've done a little over 20 investments uh, in the Cat Samson Catalyst Fund in about 18 months. That tells you about uh, a new investment every three or four weeks or so. Uh, we also opened a new incubator uh, in Israel. Uh, we felt there was a lot of great early stage technologies there, but not enough uh, encouragement for early stage technologies to, uh, to come to fruition. So we right now have a capacity for 10 companies. We have two companies in the incubator. Uh, these are outside companies whom we are hosting uh, and collaborating with. Later on today, I'm going to be having a panel for our partners, and uh, we're going to be having some of those guys on stage as well. So please join us at 3 o'clock. Uh, what we've done is, is, is similar to what Brennan's done here, which is very quick decisions. We make decisions right here locally. Uh, 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 I've been in the venture capital business for about 15 years myself. So understanding what entrepreneurs really want and, and making sure that we, we give them a very quick uh, yes or a no uh, is incredibly important. Uh, but the real hard work starts after we say yes, which is we work with the company to help accelerate innovation and then eventually try to get on a Samsung platform. So with that, uh, I'll stop. Uh, thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. We have some time for questions if anybody would like to ask any questions of us and um, be happy to take them now. We have one at the back. Sorry, in the security space? The question is, uh, do we invest in the security space? You want sure. So. Uh, Security, if you think about each of the four areas that I talked about, whether it is related to uh, mobile health or the Internet of Things or uh, computer architecture, uh, human interface, or we're talking about um, areas in cloud infrastructure, security is really part of every one of these areas. For example, in computer human interface, uh, we worked with companies that do uh, biometrics, for example, which is an area that we think... Uh, uh, is, is really interesting for us. You want seamless biometrics to be able to get authenticated onto devices. That's an interesting area. Very similarly, uh, uh, as I mentioned on digital health area, we think of uh, privacy as being a very important piece of it. How do you make sure that my data is my data? Uh, in other words, uh, if you're, if, if you're going to be sharing your vital signs onto a, into a cloud platform, you want the cloud platform to behave like, like a bank. Uh, which is I can give my bank uh, uh, my money, but I, if I want it back, I get it back, right? And that's a very core idea. So we've invested around that concept around uh, digital health as well. Uh, it's very similar across multiple areas, but security is basically part of almost everything that we do today.
Brandon, do you want to? Yeah. Um, so uh, what's important to us is like is is anything that we invest in. I'm sorry. Um, the the gentleman here has a, a, a intellectual prop, IP around uh, intellect IP around. Um, I'm sorry. It's IP around uh, technology for uh, stopping phone calls from disturbing you at night. Got it. So um, uh, IP. It has a company with IP around stopping calls so that uh, it's like a do not disturb kind of thing on your cell phone. That's, that's right. easy. Right. That's the, uh, right. So, uh, so, so broadly speaking, I think uh, IP is important. Um, so, uh, you know, I think, I, I think at Samsung, I, I find it to be more important than it used to be when I was a uh, mainstream venture capitalist. So IP uh, gets a lot of attention for us. Um, but more so than the IP, we care a lot about um, things that will broadly change the consumer experience um, so in a in a in a in a in a much more integrated kind of way so we're not as excited about um, applications that basically sit on the phone and if you're looking for sort of distribution on the phone that's not what we're excited about but if there is something some way that it can be integrated in a again in a in a, um, in, an ex in a way that really changes the consumer experience um, more in a broad broad kind of way that's those are the kinds of companies that we're, we're interested in uh, maybe a little bit of a, 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 a angle on this. The way we think about it is uh, we want to invest behind highly disruptive uh, core technology companies. Uh, and some of those technology companies do have intellectual property. Some of them don't because they're really early stage. Uh, but we want to invest in companies that are able to be independent uh, because we think innovation comes from independent companies who have the ability, who see the opportunity to go change the world at the same time, uh, perhaps create wealth uh, for themselves. And that's, uh, that's the story, right? So just IP on its own is not that interesting as much as a company that utilizes the IP to do something really amazing with it. Uh, hi, Anish Chandra, Chrome and Pulsonic. Uh, thanks for the talk. One question I wanted clarification on, on. You said you guys make quick decisions. Uh, could you speak just a little bit about this time scale of quick? Sure. Um, for us, I think we try to say, you know, uh, within a team, we talk about venture speed. And so uh, typical, um, we want to keep to the typical kind of venture speed of any other mainstream venture fund out there. So uh, typically for us, uh, from meeting to, um, let's say, term sheet should take no longer than, you know, with all the due diligence involved, should take no longer than two months. Um, if we have to move faster, we move faster. So some deals get done in a month. And so you know, we, we, we try to make the decisions uh, according to when it is that, um, uh, that the, that the uh, company requires it to close around. Having said that, there are some things that are unique about, uh, about getting uh, wire transfers from Korea to happen in the US. Mm -hmm. And so there is that process, right? So it's, 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 it, I, would, I, would, I would ascribe it as a sort of like making a capital call um, for a typical venture fund. So in a typical venture fund, um, if there's money set aside during that quarter, yeah, the funding, the wiring is very easy. But there are uh, occasions where um, you won't have enough set aside for that quarter and you have to go out and make a capital call to your investors. And it's going to take a little bit more time for that money to arrive. And that's sort of like the way that I would describe it for us is that for each investment, there is this notion of having to make a capital call. So there is this uh, extra time that, uh, that's required to, to get the money wired in, uh, to the company, right? Um, but we try to set those expectations ahead of time so that uh, you know when the money's going to hit the, the fund so that we, you can make the appropriate kind of adjustments that you need to your fundraising cycle or to have a secondary closing or something like that. But the decisions in terms of whether or not to invest, that can happen quickly. Uh, maybe I can add a little bit of flavor to this as well. Uh, think of it this way. If you think about corporate investors, uh, perhaps from other companies, a lot of times you'll be interacting with folks 
uh, who are uh, who are conduits to the ultimate decision makers uh, elsewhere, and that creates multiple layers of uh, complexity in a decision making in, in startups uh, for you know for uh, for corporate investors. What we've tried to do here is to change that completely, uh, which is uh, when Brendan or I are sitting down with a startup, or our, my team member is sitting down with a startup to figure out if it's a good investment or not uh, for Samsung and if it's a good strategic fit. What we try to do is, if it is a no, typically you get to a no a lot quicker uh, than, than a yes decision. And so entrepreneurs respect that. They want to get to know a no way quicker rather than uh, spending time uh, with with us when they may not uh, they may not eventually get an investment from us so we try to be very clean with that uh, number two uh, last year uh, in, in the last 18 months since I've been here uh, my team probably saw well over 2,000 potential investments the good thing about uh, Samsung being here in the valley is uh, is, uh, is we are right here and you guys can come and talk to us uh, but it also means we're getting a tremendous amount of inflow which is fantastic uh, we, uh, I feel like a kid in the candy store uh, with so many great ideas coming into us uh, but but it takes processing capability which is to go from uh, a, a large number of inflow into figuring out what really matters to us and whether we can spend time on it or not and what we've tried to do is uh, schedule an investment committee every two weeks or every three weeks and we make a decision right at that point um, whether it makes sense to us and, and it's very typical which is a few weeks uh, is probably the right time to think about a term sheet there's been an instance where uh, we saw a company on a Friday afternoon and on Monday afternoon we had a decision uh, and a term sheet in front of the company so in unique cases we are able to do that as well so uh, I'll stop that I at the mic yeah. Sure. Um, you, um, you spoke earlier to uh, independence and investing in companies and technologies, and I think, I think that's important for the, the companies to know that. Um, but it brings up a question I had about, because um, earlier slides from the, the first speaker had talked about uh, working within Samsung and getting introductions to different portions within Samsung. How, what are the dynamics like in the case that Samsung is both an investor and a customer? Because that that has potential for conflict. The the and you know. Sure. Um, so um, we're we're so um, when we become an investor in a company, we have a fiduciary responsibility to that company. So that's first, right? So uh, as an investor, um, what we're about is not so much that uh, we don't represent the business units, right? So we are um, we have a fiduciary responsibility first to the company. Um, and our job is to open the right doors. Um, after that, in terms of what the negotiation is, in terms of the business negotiation, the commercial contract, those kinds of things, uh, we can act as advisors, but we don't share any information with the business units as to what the company strategy is, uh, what, what the financials are, or anything like that. So that's a, uh, we try to keep that as, a, as an arm's length kind of relationship. So any, any, any sort of business material that's shared with the investment team stays with the investment team. That's the policy that we have. Um, and again, it's the commercial contract that you sign is, is up to the company, right? And uh, the final decision is there. And also, we don't have final decision making power on the, on the business unit side, so we're not making any decisions on the part of the business unit either. Uh, do you invest in FDA regulated uh, wearables and do kind of low level class one and class two devices kind of scare you off at all? Sure. Uh, so here is one way to think about it. So Samsung is a consumer company. We're not a, you know, a medical devices company today. Um, but uh, if you think about the concept of uh, getting behind technologies that are clinically relevant, in other words, they are highly accurate and they work for everybody, the young and the old and the dark skin and the, and the fair skin, et cetera, et cetera, uh, uh, many of these devices involve um, uh, 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 injecting energy into the human body and then getting it back. And by definition, that requires an FDA uh, approval at some level. So there are some FDA approvals that are fairly easy to get uh, in, in a matter of months. There are others, uh, which is uh, like invasive uh, technologies or, or therapeutics that takes a really long time and clinical tests in order to get there. Uh, where we focus on is uh, technologies that are clinically relevant, which is it could be, uh, it could be potentially gotten in a fairly short time frame. Uh, these technologies are safe for everybody to use, and they actually work. 
Uh, now, if you can then build consumer technology based on that, now you have something that is really sophisticated, uh, but, it, but is quite useful to you, right? So that's the way we think about it. So we don't walk away from FDA regulations per se, but we really look for something that is FDA light that works for consumers. I think we've both done investments in that space where yes. it, it does require FDA. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Hey, quick question. Um, I don't know if you guys mentioned this because I was a little late. Uh, where have you found the most success with your investments uh, as far as where the deals originated? Is it referrals from companies you already worked with or do you get inbounds that are successful? Like, what's the best way to get a hold of you guys, I guess, is the question. Um, well, the best way to get a hold of me is uh, by email. So it's kim.brendan at uh, samsung.com. Um, I think for the most part, it, you know, I would say that uh, this the way we operate is no different than most venture capitalists operate, right? So if we get a referral, that's going to get a higher level of attention, right? right. Um, if I remember meeting somebody at a conference, that's going to get a higher level of attention than something that's just going to come over the transom, right? Um, but having said that, we do look at everything that gets into our inbox. Um, it's very similar, and uh, here, here's the way to think about it. Both Brendan and I have been in the venture capital industry for a while, and it's all mostly been here in the Valley. So our personal networks uh, absolutely matter, and getting referred in absolutely matter. Uh, but we're not the only folks in our team. We have, we have a pretty large team. I, I see one of my colleagues, Katya, in the back. She, uh, she is a venture capitalist with experience in Europe. She has a great network in Europe. And she sees a lot of the uh, uh, venture deals out of Europe, uh, which, is, uh, which is very interesting for us. So we have a global team. And if you're able to find uh, a way to link in to us, uh, which is great. If not, uh, you know, shoot it to us. We owe you a quick answer one way or the other. So we'll make sure that we can get there. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So can you guys just talk a little bit about your appetite for B2C types of investments versus organizations that are more B2B? Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're definitely about, for the, for, for, for the OIC side, uh, we're definitely about, um, uh, we, we do both, right? But uh, we're, at the end of the day, we're a consumer company too, right? So, uh, you know, I, I think, again, our interests are fairly broad ranging. And so um, we have a number of investments on the B2C side as well as the B2B side. I would say that if, if I looked at my portfolio, probably more of those have been on the B2C side than the B2B side. Uh, but again, so much of like today, it's like the distinction between B2B and B2C is just like, you know, uh, what used to be clearly enterprise is now sort of consumer, like, you know, the consumerization of enterprise apps, things like that. So everything kind of is, the, the, the lines aren't as distinct. Uh, but what we, again, what we care about is if we can change the, um, it's, if it's disruptive and it can change the experience that people have with our devices or with our products or services, we care about that. So whether that happens at work or whether that happens at home or at school or at play, it really doesn't matter as long as what you're bringing to us is something that can be very disruptive and change the experience for people in a meaningful way. But the way we think about it is, is quite similar. Um, if it is an infrastructure-related core technology that needs to come together, uh, it's naturally a B2B, I think, right? But if it is a, uh, a, a, an end consumer related service based on data or based on healthcare, uh, it's a, it's a consumer based uh, uh, technology, right? So it really depends on what we look at. It's really both. Mm -hmm. uh, so quick question, is there an application process or do we just email you? There's no uh, formal application process. Uh, email us, uh, you know, it, we can, uh, uh, there, as Shankar said, I guess you got people at the conference. I've got people at the conference. We're, we actually had a uh, process where, uh, uh, on the OIC side, you can meet with some with the uh, uh, with the team. Uh, I think we have, we're having office hours or something like that. Um, if you want, just just uh, grab me afterwards and we can talk about that. But mm -hmm. email is a great way to reach out. Or or LinkedIn. Or LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. we're all, we're both on LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, I think you just answered. Uh, my question. Um, uh, I wanted to find out uh, if you invest, uh, basically what the typical investment process looks like from beginning to end, and if you invest in um, first-time entrepreneurs or bootstrap startups who are looking for capital to expand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I have a bias for bootstrap startups, because uh, when I was at uh, my previous venture fund, that's what we specialized in, was uh, really capital-efficient companies, so I love bootstrap startups. Uh, 
first-time entrepreneurs, uh, you know, you got to start somewhere, right? And so um, it doesn't matter whether you're a first-time entrepreneur or have a um, have have lots of startups. Uh, what I care about is, are you passionate about your business? Do you know your domain? Um, those are the things that are important, right? And uh, um, the process for us is, uh, you know, we'll take an initial meeting. And again, for for what we do. Um, it's important to have that strategic connection. And so we don't necessarily have to have a collaboration identified and, and signed and things like that before we make an investment. But we as an investment team have to feel good that we can deliver on a partnership or a collaboration. And again, I think that's what the entrepreneurs are looking for too. So if we don't feel that we can deliver on a partnership or a collaboration, then we won't invest. But if we feel like that, we can, we can accomplish that, uh, then we will make that investment. Um, uh, even if that even if that collaboration or partnership might be months or years away, right? Uh, uh, but uh, uh, so that what we, what we will do is we will go back and um, figure out what the appropriate team is within the business units and get their feedback, right? Is there interest? Is this something that they're looking at? And so that's usually the, uh, one of the, you know, we'll, we'll take a first meeting, we'll do a triage around, okay, this is interesting or this is not, but we'll uh, really reach out to our business units too to make sure that there's interest because otherwise, um, you know, again, we're not purely financial investors. We're strategic investors, and the collaborations and the partnerships really matter. Otherwise, we're not going to have the kind of success that, that we're trying to aim for. Mm -hmm. uh, for the uh, uh, Catalyst Fund, I think we do things slightly differently. Uh, the reason is uh, he, right here in the Valley, uh, we have folks who are building platforms, uh, open platforms, and we have uh, innovation fellows uh, who are here who are experts in various areas. So what we try to do is uh, uh, figure out a fit, a good fit for our team here to work with uh, the startup company. And if there's a really good fit and we feel that the technology is highly disruptive and we can help that uh, technology to come to fruition and accelerate the progress, uh, then we engage. We take the chance that further down the road, uh, the company may or may not find a strong foothold uh, with our BU. And the reason is, I think, first of all, you've got to solve these really fundamental technologies before they become relevant. And that's what we're trying to do, which is to get a little bit ahead of the curve uh, before you can take them in. Uh, but we take the second part really seriously because that's how we are judged in terms of ultimate success. It's ultimate strategic value to the company is if we find an early stage idea uh, that's going to get on a... Uh, a Samsung platform, and if you get on the Samsung platform, boom, you're on 400 million cell phones, right? And that's that's a huge success. So I just wanted to say real fast, thank you for empathizing with bootstrap entrepreneurs. It's a, <laughs> it's a fun lifestyle, but it's a stressful one. But we see opportunities all the time, and uh, especially when we come to events like this, and you know, there's incredible ways we could scale our projects. And I think uh, Eric from the VP of Smart Home said, how do we get you to invest your next 100 hours of development in us? And, uh, you know, like with our project, we are working on it. We're full steam ahead. You know, we're going to probably get it done next month. But if we take on some of these ecosystem uh, projects, it's going to really cost us time and development. We may have to bring on some expertise and perhaps make a small investment. Is this the kind of opportunity you would like for us to bring to you and say, hey, we're working on something, but I think we could actually become a little more special, get a little sparkle if we have you join? What do we do? Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of the, the things that, uh, that we want to focus on, again, we're, all, we're still all looking for the same thing, right? Which is if what you've got as an idea is a, a truly disruptive kind of idea that can really transform um, the consumer experience on, on our, on our uh, devices, on our services, our, our, um, our applications, that's what we're looking for. The, the more developed it is, the better. Uh, a lot of times, um, you know, we'll encounter entrepreneurs who are um, developing something on their own, trying to use our SDKs, trying to use our APIs, and they're hitting a wall somewhere. Um, we welcome those kinds of things, too, where we can uh, potentially help you to navigate again within Samsung. It may not be an investment opportunity, but we'll certainly try to help you navigate and try to, um, you know, make the process easier for, uh, in terms of working with Samsung. If it was something along the lines of, you know, we're pretty happy doing what we're doing with a project that this, is this small, but perhaps we could partner with Samsung to maybe license what we're doing or offer it up to you so you could scale it across all these different business units to create, perhaps create some 
uh, synergy between what you're already working on. I mean, right. should we basically give you a proposal and say, here's something we're looking at investigating? But you know, it's a lot of work on our end to spend a month with your investment team working through business cases and coming up with cost analysis and cash flows and everything else. So Yeah, if you're thinking about more like a, a, a licensing kind of thing or, or something where um, it doesn't involve an investment, that's okay too. And, and there are teams within Samsung that just do that, right? So it doesn't require an investment. It may not be, uh, we're not investing in a, um, you know, the, the, the direction that you want to head may not be, uh, in terms of building an independent company, is not where we want to, might want to invest in the company. If I'm, if I'm hearing your question uh, right, that you be, might have a technology yeah. that can be licensed to us um, in other areas. Um, there, are comp there are groups within Samsung that just do that, and I'd be happy to introduce you to those teams as well. All right. Well, you, you, you really have to think of us as the on-ramp to engage with, with us long-term, right? Uh, uh, what does it mean? In some cases, it may involve investment where we think that, okay, this is a viable long-term independent company and it's highly disruptive and an investment actually helps that collaboration. In other cases, it may not make sense, uh, but other forms of uh, help may make sense. Free tools, you know, free um, uh, you know, uh, hardware that may, you may need to test what you're doing, right? Or in other cases, it may just be uh, non-recurring engineering uh, uh, checks, right? To basically give you NRE to go develop something, uh, right? So it could be any of those cases, but the important thing is uh, uh, figuring out which one of those really works for you. And if you want to get in touch with us, we can figure out, okay, uh, what really makes sense and give you a quick answer one way or the other. Excellent. Thank you. I think this will be the last question, so we, we should start wrapping up. Thank you. I think actually my, uh, my question was uh, almost, I second the thought about the bootstrap uh, startups. And the second one is, um, being a bootstrap uh, startups, again, to, um, um, to our previous um, I mean, audience uh, questions, right? We'll have very limited resources for research and also development of a product. And that's where actually to some of your point about collaboration might come into picture. I might not need technically an investment like you have mentioned. I might need help from the research because you have better research labs than what I can kind of scale into. And um, the second one is, uh, so this is more towards like, okay, the, the area of my, uh, of, of, uh, my company. Um, Samsung education was started and then actually there is, there, there is nowhere heard of, like, okay, for the uh, past two years, right, uh, everything on virtual reality and all this now. There is a connection between what you are doing, uh, like um, uh, good communication, um, virtual reality, all of that actually into kind of okay, education as well. That's where actually my, my, uh, my company is heading into. But we, you have better research and you have, like, is there a collaboration that can happen with the idea? And again, back to kind of some of the questions, right? How do we approach with that? What is the proposal that we can, uh, is there any, uh, any case study that I can kind of refer to before kind of coming to you? So I, I think I have two questions. The first one was like uh, bootstrap company, you don't have a lot of uh, R&D that you can do on your own. Can you somehow leverage some of the resources that Samsung has? Second question was around uh, the areas that we identified, how connected are they to the business units and, and how long-term might, might those things be? Because in the education space, you saw a lot of interest and then no interest. Yeah. yeah? Is that right? Well, I'll take the first one, which is, you know, I'll go back to what I said earlier, which is uh, uh, the Samsung Catalyst Fund is a, is a tool to help the collaboration, right? And, uh, and there are other tools available. Uh, and, and, and there are, for example, uh, in our Israel incubator, uh, uh, which has a capacity of 10 companies, and we have a couple of companies in there today, we have shared lab space where they can test equipment. Uh, we have made available uh, uh, servers and computers that are completely separate uh, in a different floor away from the Samsung uh, electronics offices uh, just for the startups where they could use these resources and they don't have to spend a lot of capital expenses on getting these things ready. Uh, we've given them the ability to go get free tools from some of our partners, pe pe folks like uh, other Silicon Valley companies who are willing to work with us because they have a common 
uh, complementary goal towards making these companies successful. So uh, with our brand and with our influences, we are able to do that substantially. The most important thing is to accelerate innovation because if the companies succeed in solving a technical problem, uh, potentially we get a front row seat uh, to working with a company. That's what we want at the end of the day. Is that helpful? Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it.